right, we're back at that neutral situation. Let's see what happens. Wow, again. No more wager available now. Here, I'm just waiting for it. Doesn't end with command grab. A little too far away. I like the movement right now from Godspeed. Just trying to stay away. Jump two. This could be it right now. And this is it for game one. Godspeed takes it. That was really close. Pierre Barrog was getting him with pretty much every single slide and every single overhead. So I want to see if Godspeed is going to try to see if he can actually uh, guess right in the blocks. Pierre Barrog playing really strong, too. I know uh, last night he was dropping a few combos, but mm -hmm. today he looks really, really solid. Well, he, he dropped some of his setups, which I, I think is a, is a big issue for him. Yeah. But yeah, he's guessing right on the mix-ups, and, and as Killer Frost, that's a major, major part of your game. Oh, God, underneath! Oh, Stop there you go. He, he, uh, he dropped his combo again. Goes for the cross-up. Yeah, again, I've seen him use that against a bunch of characters, but maybe not good against Black Adam. That was nice from Godspeed, anticipating the slide, doing a neutral jump, but ends up getting hit anyway. Is he going to try it again? No, stays away. Godspeed smartly reacted to the lack of jump. And that's how you deal with slide. Jump back two, turn it into a really big combo for himself. He can get the corner. Yeah, and Black move away. Yeah, and Black Adam definitely has one of the best jump twos in the game. It has this ridiculous range and crosses people up. It's really good. Yeah, and he's using it really well right now. Excellent movement on his part. Landing with jump two on slides. PR may be going a little bit too slide happy. Again. Yeah, he doesn't uh, he doesn't get a full uh, conversion off of that punish there, but. Here you go. Let's see if Pierre Bar can make something happen right now. Oh, Try to go for the damage. Yeah. He ends up taking that round. So it's pretty close game right now. Oh, this is going to hurt right here. Oh, no. he drops it. Now, Pierre Barog sitting on a full bar of meter right now. Pierre Barog really trying to get in on this. And again, good mobility from Godspeed. Just staying away. Oh, jump two again. Yeah, Pierre Barwick had to clash in that situation. It would have been way too close for him to, to try to play it safe there. Yeah, he's getting 30% life back. Nice, he expected the backdash. He has the corner and the grab. It's going to be high or low. Oh, wow. Yeah, that That's was a really risky. Take, yeah. Now, the thing, oh. about the, the thing about Black Adams, he doesn't have any lows, so the parry wasn't actually that bad of an option in that regard. And no whiff punish. He's got to be, yeah, good job, just jumping back. Yeah, good air-to-air -air there from Pierre Balrog. Yeah, just throwing projectiles like that against Black Adams' mobility. Now, you this realize is, not that great. This is something that we saw last night as well. All of these matches in Injustice have been 1-1 one, one apiece going down to the wire. So I want to see if that's what's going to happen today, too. Pierre Barrock smiling, shaking his head. So after you lose a game, you get to switch stages. Yeah. Stages are super important, as you can see. The interactables play a huge role. Okay, and you can already see PR Barrock's reaction right now. This is the rooftop of Metropolis, and Black Adam definitely has the advantage in terms of the interactables. Yeah, different characters use interactables in different ways. As a power character, Black Adam gets to throw the uh, little probes that show up on the top of the screen. There you go. Once again, Godspeed has been getting hit by almost every single slide that PR Barrog has been throwing out. Oh, oh nice. Wow, this backdash is maybe to try to get away from an interactable, but then ran into it anyway. Both players scouting each other out really well right now. And there it is again. Godspeed just hanging out by it, camping by it. Oh, try to use the air mobility, but no. <laughs> Nice, right. confirms it, comes in, probably the end of the round, yeah. All right, once again, Pierre Barg is sitting on a full bar of meter right now. He can do some major damage with reset potential if he can start any pressure at all. Gets underneath, and Godspeed just staying away. So much pushback on that lightning. Oh, jump two. What can he get up this? Is it the round yet? Yeah, this is going to take the round right here. Oh, oh maybe, no! Maybe not, no! So close, and he keeps trying to end it. Just hit a man to punish. A criminal too common to you. Pierre Barg, I, I'd say he probably used maybe at least two bars of meter, 25%. Oh, he uses all, wow, all of it. The extra meter for just the 3% additional life back. I'm guessing he might have thought that Godspeed might have tried to take a bar away, but I, I think you're probably right. Yeah. 
And you can see how tough the mid the uh, the far range game is for Killer Frost. And he gets me with that dive kick. This is gonna hurt right here. Tons of damage on that. Oh, jump oh. backs too. Tried to uh, reset and it worked out. Godspeed eliminates PR Rog. That was really smart from Godspeed. He knew that PR Rog was going for those low slides a lot, and he started just neutral jumping, jumping back, and hitting him with that jump to into a full combo. So that was a really smart play from Godspeed. It was good adaptation from his part. Yeah, he really had the good reads on that. PR Rog just went in a little bit too hard, I think, on slides sometimes. He yeah. got a little predictable with him that was going to happen. But you can definitely see how that stage choice affected the match. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Killer Frost, she couldn't use the interactables at all, and Black Adam was pretty much able to control that entire spacing game with that interactable. And you saw PR Bog was trying to avoid it, but his timing was just a little bit off on mm -hmm. those dashes. Well, it was great timing by Godspeed, who one time delayed when PR Rog thought that he was going to throw it. He yeah. waited just a little bit, ended up knocking her out of the air, and PR Rog out of the tournament. So, so it looks like our next match is going to be EGP, FLK, MF Slayer versus VXG, EMP, KDZ. Yeah, this is in the winner's side. There it is on your screen. The other side of the winner's bracket is AGE, New York Chris G versus uh, DJT, as you said. So this is going to be uh, California versus New York. And uh, now, MF Slayer, he put up GGM Busy, oh, wow. which is a huge fan favorite here yeah. in Injustice. He uses Aquaman. Aquaman. Right. He's known for his, uh, his uh, Johnny Cage play in Mortal Kombat. He also put uh, Blackula into the loser's bracket. He also put Eris into the loser's bracket and Rio. Wow. So, yeah, he's, he's from Southern California. Another one of the, the guys who shows up at Wednesday Night Fights, as, as Godspeed was. Southern California, uh, repping pretty well here. Yeah, he trains with the EGP guys all the mm -hmm. time. One thing about MS Slayer is that he also uses Wonder Woman. We haven't seen that yet, but I'm really curious if he's going to throw her out. Uh, Superman and Wonder Woman are the two choices. Looks like he's hanging out on Superman. KZ, KDZ, definitely a Superman player uh, out of New Jersey. Uh, and he has had a lot of success in this game so far. Yeah, he ended up putting uh, Reno Racks into the loser's bracket, Revolver, Gridman, and Blind Ducky. And Blind Ducky is a Raven player that really surprised a lot of people, holding it on against mo uh, multiple Supermans. I didn't expect that matchup to go into, into such close, close matches. Really impressive play from Blind Ducky, who ended up getting ninth place in the tournament. And KDZ did great at CEO just uh, a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. KDZ and Perfect Legend had an intense, intense matchup. It was absolutely down to the wire. KDZ, he really wanted to land that super with Superman. Well, ultimately, that didn't end up working out. Perfect Legend barely, barely taking that match. But I always really like watching KDZ Superman because he has a lot of technology with this character. He's not just a zoning character. He's not just, he's not just a zoning Superman or just a 4-2-3 kind of Superman. Yeah. He has a lot of trickiness. Cross-up dives and the like. We'll see if that comes into play. Two out of three winners, semifinals. All right, he just starts to match off with a 4 2 3, throws a TV at his face. KDZ gets the punish and trades up immediately. Gonna be a ton of damage on this. Tries to set up. Oh, that's what it, if, if that was a quick rise, it would have been a different story. Great job by Slayer to not do it. He didn't fall into it. Gotta watch out for interactable. Wow. Good punish there from using the interactable. Yeah, Slayer is going to get a good corner situation for himself. Try for a cross support or not, but again, no, no quick prize. Yeah, Superman is one of those characters with a lot of different mobility. You have to think so many different ways because he can cross you up, fake cross you up. It's really, really difficult to deal with. KDZ with the first round. Oh, gets it first. Chooses not to dash in afterward. KDZ just waiting it out. Slayer doing some good zoning of his own. Meter burns it for the round. Yeah, if I was MS Slayer, I would just keep trying to zone him out. It seems like this is really working in his favor right now. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely had the upper hand with this so far. Might as well make it happen. I mean, you know the kind of player that KDC is with Superman. He wants to be doing tricks. There we go. We just got... Ooh, with punish. Oh, no. no. Wow. That was really tricky. So dirty. This ends now. Yeah, Superman with those cross-up overheads, it's absolutely so difficult to deal with. And KDZ with the win on the Clash, he's going to get the punish there, 4-2-3, for the first game. Oh, are we going to character select right now? 
And we'll see what he does. Oh, he's, he's thinking hovering. about it. He's thinking about it. And I, I can hear people yelling at him from the crowd. And he does. Wow, he, he goes it. Wonder Woman. That's awesome. I'm really excited to see a Wonder Woman in top eight. We've been talking about this a lot. She seems like a character with a ton of options, uh, a lot of good stuff about her, but we just don't see her very often. Yeah, you don't really see her too much. I know Rio also uses Wonder Woman. He mm -hmm. actually busted her out at CEO. That's right. Wonder Woman, a very, very strong character. She has uh, a parry that can parry both projectiles and attacks. She does massive amount of damage. She has good space control and mobility. And KDZ right now, dominating in the beginning right now. Ooh, whip punish. And KDZ is going to take maximum advantage of this. Wow. This is going to hurt. 43%. Gets the anti-air. Oh, he oh, misses this is the lasso. Oh. That could be a huge swing right there. KDZ with a giant advantage. Positional advantage, too. Again, trading up. Yeah, immediately goes for the wager. Might not get that much life back though if he wins this that was a really good maximum of 15 yeah that was a really good whiff punish from KDZ huh? recognizing that Wonder Woman's string was moving her forward and hit her first before he can she can actually reach him yeah a couple characters with good forward moving strings oh another setup Slayer blocks safe on block right there and, and again know. KDZ just dominating this game so far yeah this is gonna hurt okay and this okay, is going to be a big combo. It, yep. Keeps it up. Finish it off. Yeah, this time he gets it. Not quite dead yet. Though. Oh, and he got the back dash. Yeah, Wonder Woman also, she, she also has that dive punch similar to Superman. She can also do it horizontally. Trying to stay away during the trade, but not successful. This could be it right now. If he yeah. doesn't drop this combo... All right. There you go. KDZ moves on. Slayer's going to have to try his luck in loser's bracket. So it'll be Slayer against Theo in loser's side. Not going to run that yet, though. We're going to have to go to the other side of winner's bracket. So it looks like we're going to have Chris G versus DJT. Yeah, this is a this is a giant matchup. Chris has had so much success in this game so far. I know. He ended up winning UFGT. He ended up winning CEO. DJT, he ended up winning Mortal Kombat just on Friday. Two days ago. Yeah, yeah. just two days ago. So he's on a high right now. You yeah. know he wants to win this. DJT, one thing about him is that he is extremely good at blocking. His blocking game is absolutely phenomenal, and he can play very, very patiently. We saw that during Mortal Kombat. He was using Cyrex. He was just picking and choosing the right spots in order to just punish and get full damage uh, uh, opportunities. Now, Chris G he uses Green Arrow, right? and uh, Green Arrow is really known for his mix-up game. But I want to see how well DJT can actually block that stuff. Yeah, he's definitely going to be put to the test on this. Chris, when he plays, has tended to just... You know, get the advantage on everybody in the mix-ups. Not in this game, but that's a hallmark of his play in general. Yeah, so it's going to be really cool to see. I, I'm, I'm really curious to see how patient DJT can play in this match. Mm -hmm. uh, he uses Green Lantern, mm -hmm. so I want to see how his Green Lantern plays because Green Arrow, he can kind of just... Uh, he can kind of jump around, you know, throw some uh, some ice arrows at his way. He has good chip damage potential with the flame arrows as well. Uh, Green Lantern, he has to throw projectiles, but one can be ducked. The other one can, uh, it has a limited range because it's uh, upward and it goes in a, a downward angle, mm -hmm. his, uh, his rocket. So I want to see how that's going to play a factor. Like, will DJT try to keep Green Arrow away with his machine gun? I want to see. So that's another regional battle, too. DJT, a local here to Vegas, and Chris G, as you can see in the name, New York Chris G, and it's another one of these things where it's a dedicated MK guy against Chris G, who has played everything. He certainly played MK, and was really solid in it when he did, but people nowadays might know him more for Marvel 3, for Street Fighter 4, that kind of thing. Yeah, Chris G uses uh, Reptile in Mortal Kombat, yep. and he always surprises people when he ends up winning or getting really, really close to top eight. People are like, what? How does Chris G do this? <laughs> but Chris G is extremely solid. He just has fundamentals, and it really works in his favor. Plus, Reptile is a really good character. Mm. Now, he's, he's solid in everything. So it looks like we're going to get underway. It's going to be Green Arrow versus Green Lantern. And we'll see their takes on this. Oh! And, and immediately, yeah, down one, jump back arrow, goes for the load up again, and he's playing patiently there. Maybe looking for lanterns might wake up. 
Okay, okay, this time low. Nice block by DJT. Okay, now one thing about that string right there is that it doesn't look like Chris G knows it, but you can actually dash forward and get a full combo punish if you see that rocket coming. Chris G is just respecting it on block. Yeah, and, and if you're DJT, you might as well just keep going to it right now. Chris G, he tried to challenge there. But yeah, that's... That's great for, for DJT if he can just keep doing that yeah. right as well. Yeah, Green Lantern is what, around 20 plus frames on that on block, so it, you definitely want to just keep doing it if your opponent is not actually punishing you. Mm -hmm. the, oh, deep, wow, Ice Arrow. Gotta watch out for mix-ups now. Jump three. Nice block. There's the blocking you were talking about. But jump three, air to air, so solid. Yeah, DJT just kind of chilling back already. You can see he wants to play that lame game. Oh, nice. He made it and he got the combo. Yeah, DJT is really great at picking and choosing his spots, but he gets hit by the mix-up. Chris reloads. Oh, wake up this time. Remember in the first round, when Chris respected it this time, he didn't think it was going to come. And DJT just playing patiently, waiting for Chris to get into range. Oh, no, he gets hit by the ice arrow. Really smart from Chris G to throw it at that, that speed. He's not throwing the arrows in a way that's predictable. That's so nice. Trying for setup, no, from the front. Oh, he didn't have meter, I see. All right, I want to see... Now a full super, potentially very damaging in mix-ups at this point. Yeah, Chris G, if Chris G does a reset, this could almost potentially be the match. It's going to do massive amount of damage. But you see DJT slowly moving backwards, and this, he's just going to keep trying this. He might as well. Chris gets hit low with the back one this time. Yeah, now that strategy with the rocket is something that DJT was using at UFGT as well. And it took people a while to figure out what to do, so he just kept abusing it until it stopped working. Wow, Chris G uses all of his meters, so now he's just going to have to play for mix-ups to make this comeback. He has to worry about interactable use right now. Great blocking again. Wow, he is really... Oh! There's the wake up. Oh! He gets with the overhead. Peter burns it! That was so smart. He ended up just taking the damage from the string and it just went straight into the overhead. And DJT ends up taking game one over Chris G. It looks like Chris G is asking people what to do right now because I'm pretty sure he doesn't know how to react to that missile from the from that one string. I think that might be the exact conversation going on right there. Chris yeah. G definitely asking about something. You can see DJT's face. Uh, he's confident, he's not concerned. Yeah, somebody needs to tell Chris G that all you have to do is just dash forward and you get a full combo punish. Well, DJT is definitely going to, unless he heard what was, what was going on there because it was right behind him. Yeah. Uh, he's just going to try uh, test it out until Chris does otherwise. There's no need to mix things up if what you're doing is working. Chris G doesn't have any time right now to, to get any different arrows out. There you go. There it is. Stocks ice arrow. Oh, jump three. Chooses to restock instead of combo. Nice. Goes for high this time. And he backs off. He is really worried about that wake-up. It's come a couple times and he's been punished on it. Definitely not a good trade for DJT. Yeah, Chris G is the type of player that likes to jump in on a lot of people. He likes to do jumping uh, cross-ups. So against a character like Green Lantern, that's really, really difficult to do. Nice backdash there from that overhead. Chris G. DJT tried, tried for back one a little bit slower. Oh, there's the low. Corner combo now from Green Arrow. And he still has the corner control, but he's got to watch out for meter burn uh, interactable. No, he, he jumped just, maybe just in case of that. No, it doesn't seem like interactable has played a factor in this match at all yet. Yeah, you're, you're right. So I'm curious. I'm, Chris G might be able to surprise him, and he can use that interactable infinitely until DJT actually does something about it. Right. Well, here it is now. Meter burns. And back towards the corner. Chris G still in the first round. Yeah, both players kind of filling each other out right now. And DJT, you can see him moving forward in a way that he rarely has done. And, and here he you go. A fall out of the air. That was a great arrow by Chris. Good prediction. The zoning from Green Arrow. Yeah, this is exactly what Chris G needed to do. Not only is the chip damage a lot, but on hit, that's going to be major because it also knocks him down. So that was really smart from Chris G to adapt. Oh, love these arrow timings from Chris. He's guessing exactly right. Oh, in the high this time. DJT's blocking, not, not working out. 
Maybe a chance for DJT. It's not looking good for him. No, oh, if that had hit, maybe. Now, the thing is, DJT wasted a lot of meter there. And he didn't. He wasn't able to clash in that match. I guess maybe that's why he ended up using a meter. He figured yeah. he couldn't do a clash. Right. But that was really, really smart from Chris G. Now, we saw that... Once DJT couldn't abuse that one string into the rocket, how that matchup just changed drastically. So let's see what DJT is going to do now. DJT is a player that is great at adapting as well. So we're going to see this game is going to go down to the wire right now. And he's content with the stage. Doesn't want to change anything up. Yeah, it doesn't seem like interactables have really played a, a right. factor for either of these players. They're playing it pretty honestly yeah, right I now. Th I think that's surprising. Oh, with threatening with the DJT, just waiting to block... Oh, and he gets punished by it as he was falling. This one's for you. There we go. Both players kind of feeling each other out again in that full screen range. Chris oh, G. back one. Perfect range on that, too. Nice oh. blocking. And then not that one. Maybe looking for back one low. Instead, it's the overhead. Stays above the ice arrow. Chris G opting to stick with the ice arrow. Well, he's made it work out more than a few times, for, even from far range. And he's slowly pushing DJT backwards into the corner. Which can be dangerous sometimes on this stage, but like you said, Interactables just haven't come in. Yeah, that was a really nice air-to-air -air from DJT, and he converts it with a full combo and takes that round. Yeah, he's way ahead right now. Chris G's going to need a bunch of mix-ups to make this happen. Oh, miss on the, on the Lancers might but not punished. Good blocking from DJT. He is not getting hit by any ice arrows right now. Look at that respect from DJT, though. Yeah, just Chris, waiting. Yeah, Chris G just holding his arrow out, and DJT not responding to it at all. Oh, anti-air lanterns might. The reset, finally. Yeah, that was really smart from DJT. He didn't want uh, Chris G to do any sort of breaker right there. Right. Although, I don't know. Super is so important to Chris G's comeback. I don't know if he would even want to use it at this point, unless he really, really needs to. Oh, goes for the overhead. Oh, Finally, and there, there we go. It was. You've been camping by it the whole time. This is going to hurt. Yeah, he traded up so he gets extra range on that. Oh, chip damage away. There it is. And DJT puts Chris G into the loser's bracket. That was really, really smart play from DJT. You got to see exactly what I was talking about. He can play so patiently, and his blocking sometimes is just absolutely on point. Chris G could not open him up, and that ended up playing a huge factor into the match. Yeah, you can see how important the mix-ups are for uh, Chris's character. I mean... If he's not getting those consistently, he's just so much less effective. Yeah, if you have definitely. that good blocking, that's in a major part of why DJT got that. Yeah, DJT, he saw Chris G. He was trying to threaten him with the ice arrows. DJT was just like, bring it. I, I'm going to block it, and then he's just going to anti-air him. He got him so many times with those air-to-airs into full combo punishes. That's true. Thanks to Broken Tear for being one of the sponsors here at Evolution 2013. They have a lot of great fighting game-related apparel. You can check it out at brokentear.com and get... 20% off with code EVO2013. So there's the bracket. We're in loser's side. And we're going to start off with Slayer versus Theo. It's a SoCal battle here. A couple of players who definitely played against each other before. Wednesday Night Fights regulars. Yep. And we'll see what they go for in terms of characters here. We already saw Theo with Superman. He used to play Sinestro, but has been on Superman for a long time, and that's probably what he's going to stick with. But It looks like he wants a costume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. he wants a specific costume for this match. Okay. That's funny. Some mind games, I guess, he's playing. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, he wants the regime Superman. Okay. Okay. He wants his opponent to kneel before him. <laughs> as far as Slayer, again, he, he already played against a Superman as well in KDZ. He tried his Superman out, didn't work, and then he went to Wonder Woman. Yeah. Think he might do the same thing here? Uh, I'm not sure. His Wonder Woman didn't really work out. But the thing is, it could have just been KDZ was just so on top of his game. Right. He just was absolutely dominant at one point. Okay. Superman. It's both going to be Superman. 
All right, it's going to be a Superman mirror match. We have uh, evil Superman versus a uh, regular Superman. Slayer on the one side, Theo second play or second uh, player side. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm. I, yeah, I'm guessing Emma Slayer was just waiting to do something, and he ends up getting hit by that four, two, three. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird because that's a very common opening. Oh. oh. Okay. Like I say that's a very common opening for Superman. Just forward two, see what yeah. happens. But that, that makes sense then why he didn't block. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, why aren't you blocking? Right. All right, that's cool. So one thing you probably notice is uh, there's been quite a few Supermans. Mm -hmm. uh, we have three in the top eight, but other than that, we have Green Arrow. Uh, which, which is Chris G, who also uses Black Adam as well, so we might see him use Black Adam at some point. And then we also have uh, DJT, who's using Green Lantern. We have Rio, who we saw ended up getting 7th place. He was using Batman. And then uh, we have PR Rog using Killer Frost. And we have uh, Godspeed using Black Adam. That's right. So it's a pretty diverse top 8, especially for a first time at EVO in Justice. That's right. Yeah, one of the cool things about this game is that it is a pretty recent release, so it, it's interesting to see how it's evolved. Both just by players, you know, understanding characters better, understanding strategies and stages a little bit better. Uh, it's also been, you know, changed a few times by uh, NetherRealms themselves. So it's interesting to see how that that patch from just a couple weeks ago has impacted people's play. You could definitely see it when we had when we had Killer Frost on screen earlier. Yeah, that patch is a, a huge deal because it universally improved down to the anti errors. And there we go. We got him starting off with a four-two-three trait into a throw. Push back pretty far. Ooh. So Theo is using uh, Evil Superman. Yeah, not looking great for him right here. Decent damage. Oh, goes for the setup, but no quick rise. Oh, oh, reset! He waited, he had the overhead. And because of that, he takes the first round. Hanging out at just about full life. Oh, comes in, 4-2. Turns it into how much? 18. All right, now Theo needs to make something happen right now because Superman's damage output is just too much to deal with at this point. Look at him wiping him Why out. Why is he working high? What is going on? I don't understand. And he's not stopping. Wait, what? Is I, I don't understand what's going on right now. Because that's just chip he shouldn't be taking. Something happened. Oh, it looks like his controller Oh, oh do you see this? His controller is just holding backwards. Yeah. He's just holding right. Oh, no. That's really a shame. That is horrible. Poor guy. I'm guessing it's his analog stick. It probably was it was on the right side over there. That's why you saw him blocking all the time. So he's pausing it to fix it. He was down one round. Yeah, so that match is done. Player one is awarded one match. The game is scores one game to zero. So they're giving that game... Uh, wow. That is really unfortunate. Yeah, so MF Slayer is getting game one because of that controller malfunction. That's really unfortunate. This is this is not the first time we've actually seen a controller malfunction. We had Nightmare SF who was in the middle of a match and his con his controller just paused. He ended up losing that round and then in the final to make it into top eight in losers bracket. In the losers bracket, he ended up pausing and that. And Godspeed ended up taking that match. Now, obviously, who wouldn't take that to of make course. it to top eight? Of course. But that is one of those most depressing feelings when you end up losing a match. Not because you just got blown up, right. but because your controller ended up malfunctioning. Well, it was a rough first round in that game anyway for Theo. Uh, but yeah, you know, we've seen people make comebacks. That It certainly happens. See, so to not have that chance, to just lose that game in part on controller issues, uh, that can be tough to, to come back from. Yeah, let's you know, see. I, I think Theo can make this recovery, though. He's, I mean, he's in top eight right now. Right. Clearly, he's a smart player. I'm pretty sure he can compose himself. So let's see what he's going to do. This is going to be game two right now. Remember, MS Slayer ended up taking game one because of a controller malfunction from Theo's part. Oh, I love the chase down right there. Another common opening from Superman in the mirror is backdash to get away from forward two. So Slayer dashed forward and then had his own forward two to get the punish. So smart. And that's, you got to punish that. When it's in the air, when it lands, it recovers so quickly. And Theo ends up dropping his combo there, and this is going to cost him this round right now. Yeah, cross-up jump two. Turns into first round, match point, Slayer. And that's nice, but now that interactable is gone for the rest of the round. Oh, Theo gets out of the corner. Oh, tries for scoop. 
wages. Yeah, we saw Theo was trying to whiff punish the scoop, but he wasn't in the right range, and MS Flair ends up just taking advantage of that. Is he getting any life back? Oh, no, he loses life. He actually kept the bar. He ended up taking less damage than he would have if that had been a combo, though. Okay. There we go. Good recovery from Theo right there. Ends up taking that round from MS Slayer. Let's see what can happen right now. Not, I'm guessing that was a missed input or something. I'm not sure why he would just throw that out. Now, this is going to be really tough for Theo. Yeah. Once Superman starts getting his zoning game, and there you go with the 4 2 3 combo. Wow, he can really make this. There's Slayer's wager. Slayer has the meter advantage. He's probably going to get some life back right now. There you go. He opts yeah, to right. use one bar of meter. He only had one bar to use. A very even game right now. Oh, big whiff. Not punished. Oh, I oh, like the movement. This is going to hurt. Yeah, Slayer's movement right there was excellent. Comes in for the scoop. Closes it. Oh, no. The dash under. Can he get the punish? Got to watch out for that corner, though. This is Theo's chance right now. He can make a huge comeback. Oh, oh Superman punched right in. And Slayer takes it. That was really good effort from Theo, though. He he recovered from that from that last loss because of the controller issue. He could have taken that. It was so close. So, so close. But Slayer was just on point. I, I like his idea at the end. You know, he went for the cross-up. Uh, to put himself back into the corner so that his opponent wouldn't have access to the interactable. And he tried for a mix-up, but just didn't get it. Gaber Media, also an important part of the Evolution a sponsor team. You can check them out and use promo code EVO13LGP. There's an exclusive promotion going on for that device right there, which helps you record on a console. Yeah, very, this is this is the, one of those devices that you actually don't need a computer to use. So this is really convenient to have in tournaments. You can just, if, you know, there's a lot of matches, especially at Evo, you don't get to see on stream. So, if pre, you know, people can bring one of these. They can record those matches, upload them later at another date, and you can get to see all those hype matches that we might have missed. Yeah, it's really getting popular. So, so Loser's Bracket, we're going to move on into Loser's Semifinals. Oh, I'm sorry, into the other side of, of Loser's Quarters, where we have to play Godspeed against NY Chris G, who just lost to DJT. Godspeed beat PR Rog. Yeah, so I'm curious if Chris G is going to stick with Green Arrow mm -hmm. or if he's going to switch to Black Adam because we know he can play both characters extremely well and Chris G's tournament life could potentially be on the line right now so he might want to to opt to use a, a strong strong character like Black Adam. But we know that Godspeed's going to go with Black Adam. That's that's the character he plays. Do you yeah. think Chris would want to go in with that mirror? I guess I, we'll see what they pick. Yeah, I'm not really sure how you know what his feelings are on the mirror match. But Green Arrow, I mean, that could be a tough matchup versus Black Adam. I mean, Black Adam has great mobility, mm -hmm. so I'm not really sure how he feels about that. We're going to see. I mean, it, and okay. there you go. He goes uh, Green Arrow. Wow, Black Adam's trying to get in immediately. Establishing the throw, which is important. If you're, if you're a Black Adam trying to mix people up, you've got to have throws in there. Like you said earlier, very very weak in lows. Oh, oh nice. Out of the air with jump three. There's the overhead. Chris reloads, goes for the pressure, expects back. That's wow, he just waited. That shows how much respect the opponent had for that, too. He he just had to guess right, and he didn't. Yeah, that's not really a great sign from Godspeed to have so much respect for your opponent. Chris, he's going to take that in mind in the next mix up. He knows now that he has time. Yeah, I'm curious if. If next time that happens, if Godspeed, if he, he'll opt to just use armor, and maybe he'll just take the arrow and get a full combo punish. That's you, one way to get out of that situation. You can see one of the major advantages that Black Adam has in this fight is just the damage output. Oh, yeah. So big in that. Is he going to go for the damage on this? Yes, he does, rather than the reload on the arrow. But now he's full screen, and that's where Godspeed wants to be. Nice neutral jump there from Chris G to avoid the, the smoke. Jump two into pressure. Wow, he did block low. I wonder what he was looking for there. Good tech throw from Chris G. Ends up push blocking. Oh, one, going one. fishing. He has super oh, wage. I like this. In order to make sure he doesn't get put into the super reset situation. And he might force Chris G to lose his own super on this. No, nope. Chris G does not use any meter. Nice block this time. Godspeed. Trying to come in for strings. Ooh, 
great tech by Chris. Godspeed's Christine. really trying to get away. Chris G, real smart there with that jump three. Just in case Godspeed would have went for that interactable, he would have actually punished them. This might be it. Oh, no, it's not, it's not going to kill, but it's going to do so much damage on the reset. Oh, you saw Godspeed try to jump out of the way. He didn't quite make it. This is going to hurt, though. There you go. Chris G, he's loading up his ice arrow again. He's just one mix-up away from oh. taking this match. Well, Godspeed might be one dive kick meter burn away. Oh, oh, it's frozen out of the air. Chris G scouting the interactable, punishes him from using it, and takes game one. How smart of that from Chris G. That's actually one of the things that I've been seeing him do this entire tournament. It seems like he's in stages where he has that, uh, that uh, interactable disadvantage, but he always is one step ahead of his opponent. Really smart stuff from Chris G. Kind of a bemused expression on Godspeed's face. Yeah, to get knocked out of the air in that interactable attempt, that's, you don't see that very often. And uh, Godspeed's really got to be thinking about that now. Yeah, throughout this entire tournament, from what I've seen, the only two people I've really seen that's been punishing people for using interactables is Chris G and Rio. Right, right. Yeah, Rio's great at that, too. So it's on Godspeed. All right, it looks like we're doing a 50-50, and we're going to Hall of Justice. Okay. Um, this is another stage with uh, interactables that regenerate. There's the, the Roomba that likes to drive by casually, yep, and that. Uh, that likes to come back every now and then. Yep. Now, Chris G, he could push the red button on that. If he holds the interactable button, he can let go at any time and then unleash it on his opponent. Switch from Godspeed over to Aquaman. Wow. No, oh, Chris G Missed misses it. the jump three. Oh, yep. And jump three. Chris is really pressuring, waiting for the shield to end. And he ends up going low again. Chris G not calling for the bait right there. He just opts to wait and ends up punishing Godspeed. Sends him through an interactable. And now let's see what Chris G is going to do. Yeah, stage transition right over here. Hawkman trying. Pressure, okay. Oh, down two against one of the best jump ins, too. And jump three from Green Arrow. The interactable there doesn't reach full screen. Ooh. Yeah, you can whiff punish that if you duck it. Oh, ends up standing up just before. And I like I like Godspeed's idea here of using the shield as much as he does an expectation of arrow, but it's just not working. Chris almost at super. Oh no, that's gonna be really punishable there. Good duck from Chris G. Oh, early down two. How much can he turn this into? Yeah, it goes to the needy. Okay. Oh, good use of trait there from Godspeed. Doesn't let Chris G get that full combo. Oh, this is going to be a super. He misses. He missed it. Oh, no. That is not good for Chris G. Godspeed has a full bar of meter now. And he still has wager, so in case things go bad for him, he can get a lot of life back. Chris G opting in, or uh, Godspeed opting to use that teleporter. Godspeed just opting to go full for trait rather than for... Oh, there is the wager. Okay. And there you go. Godspeed pretty much just nullified that entire mix-up from Chris G. Exactly, yeah. 30% back? He opted for 25. Okay. That's smart. He figured that the 5% extra health wasn't worth it. Okay, going for damage. I guess while he can, while he has a juggle going and the Aquaman trait won't work. Oh, really smart from Chris G. Opting to use the flame arrows to try to chip him out as much as possible. So far, it's been working. Oh, so such good zoning right now with fire. So that's be forced to try to come in, but Chris G still has his own wager. It's going to be really tough for Aquaman to make this work. Oh, he just Chris waited. G. Did you see it? He knew he had the spacing. He knew he had the range right. And he just let the arrow go as soon as he knew it was going to hit. That was so smart from Chris G. That was one of the things that we've been seeing him do so well this tournament. He does not shoot his arrows just mindlessly. He likes to wait for his opponent, pick his shots. We saw him use that interactable. Or he punished the interactable, yeah. rather, and got him with the ice arrow, took that first game. And this time, he ended up using the arrow as an anti-air, just waiting it out and punishing Godspeed. Hey, really good stuff from Chris G. You can see that Godspeed's change of character kind of forced Chris G to play a little bit differently. He went more for or for the, the just the zoning with fire arrows towards the end rather than for pressure, knowing that the trait was there. But it uh, didn't work out for him. So next up, we're going to have... Uh, 
EMP KDZ versus Crazy DJT 88. This is winner's finals. It's two out of three. Winner of this moves into grand finals where it'll be three out of five for him, but he has to wait to see who comes from loser's finals. Loser of this will head over there to play against Chris. I'm really curious to see how uh, DJT is going to... Curious to see how DJT yeah, sorry, is yeah, going to... Yeah, Chris and Slayer. Uh, how he's going to respond to Superman's uh, mix-ups. Just his overhead mix-ups off of that dive punch. Just his his um, his dash potentials. I, I want to see what he's going to do in that situation. I mean, again, DJT really good at blocking. But it's going to be really tough with Green, uh, with Green Lantern. KDZ getting situated. If DJT ends up winning this match, he'll be in grand finals. Yeah, and that'd be amazing for him. He's, again, as you said, already won one of the games here. He won Mortal Kombat 9 on Friday. To be able to take two would be huge. But KDZ has been so hungry in this game. He's been traveling well. He's been playing every week. We've seen a lot from him. Oh, yeah. He's definitely easily one of the best Superman players out there right now. And clearly, he's in the top eight right now right. in winner's finals. That's right. He's guaranteed at least top three. Same position that he was... Uh, that he ultimately ended up in at CEO. CEO, yep. Yeah. All right. VXG EMP KDZ on the one player side. Crazy DJT 88 on the second player side. So KDZ right now, he's going to have uh, interactable advantage, I would say, because there's those lights that's on the left side of the stage. And Superman, he could just jump back, dash back, and then throw the interactable. So I want to see how DJT is going to react to that, because that could potentially happen at the beginning of the match. Oh, actually, both characters have uh, the same interactable. Just open with forward, forward. There you go. Two. And goes for the reset in the... Wow. The whip punish. You can see DJT just waiting it out. He knew he had a good punish available to him. Back one turns into significant damage. Goes for low. And then he's just going to see, I guess, whether KDZ can get by that. KDZ getting in. Nice high block there. You got a trade. Oh, and he gets him with the forward 2-3. Oh, he just waited and DJT recognized it. Oh, he throws the second oh, head zone. That was so smart. He yeah. used the meter to get through the interactable and continue any sort of pressure. So good. Yeah, I love the idea, but great throw tech by KDZ afterward. And again by DJT. Wow, he knew the setup. Very common to look for a grab after the trait. Chip, though, becoming a major issue right now in this round, and he just comes in for the punch. If he would have timed that a little bit later, he would have actually ended up punishing that, that Superman punch. Ooh, wow, there's the grab finally. Is it the round yet? So very close. Now this is really, really dangerous for DJT See because that super Superman now? has super. Now he kind of has to play Superman's game because he can just unleash it at any point. Yeah, KDZ knows that DJT really, <laughs> it's a risk to do anything right now. A full screen, two frame super is an amazing punish for almost anything on reaction. And KDZ is a player that likes to use Superman Super. We saw him use it as, he was waiting to use it as CEO, but now he's just burning his meter. Yeah, he's already lost a couple bars, and so you see already Crazy DJT playing a little bit more actively. Wow, great defense, and again, a great tech. Oh, so good. Knocks him in between. Back one in the overhead. Ducking heat vision. DJT good. is... Now down on life, but we're back to the Superman with Super. Superman's uh, mobility playing a factor in this match right now. Let's see what happens. Let's see what DJT can do right here. I like that he went for, for damage right there. He didn't try to do any sort of unclashable. He wants Superman to clash, if anything, right now. Look at the time now. 14 seconds left. And oh. he gets the... Wow, and it's enough. It's enough. KDZ had a couple things to react to with Super in that round, and he just didn't bring it out. Yeah, this is not the first time we've seen KDZ just sitting on a full bar of meter. A CEO is going against Perfect Legend, and a very, very similar situation happened. So let's see if KDZ ends up adapting to that. Maybe he'll just throw out that super, or maybe he'll just burn some more meter. Forty going for the low afterward this time. Getting away. Oh, he thought he got away. Not quite there. Superman can do it. 
Yeah, Superman with that crazy mobility. He's able to jump really high. He can dash out of their way. I love that idea. After the trade, this time he went for 4-2 again rather than for the grab. Hoping that DJT was going to go for a throw tech. Dashes in. Going to get significant damage on this one. Wow. Oh, he gets the cross up. Oh, so sick. And then that, that's the round. That was such a fast round once they got to the corner. Trade, and then again, waited. DJT needs to make something happen right now. KDZ almost has a perfect. This is going to be extremely difficult to get through. Only a real master can get through this. Let's see if DJT can do it. All right, well, that's potentially a start for him here. He's going to need a lot to do it. He still has his wager. Oh, he gets one to cross up. Doesn't capitalize with anything, though. There it is. 4-2. Uh, passes on the 3. Has DJ one bar of advantage. Yeah, DJT has to use all his meter. Oh, and I'm surprised KDZ didn't use any of it. I guess he's just not worried. He'd rather keep it. But potential meter burn usage, maybe potential super situation. You got to watch out for that interactable, too. And there you go. That's extremely difficult to get through. And as you can see, uh, Green Lantern can't actually jump out of the way. Right. Just great zoning right now from KDZ. He's oh. on top, and he punishes the use of the interactable yeah. KDZ with the game. KDZ saw that one coming. There was no way that DJT was going to hit him with that laser. KDZ just off a neutral jump, does a laser, and ends up taking that game. So what would you do if you're DJT here? Would you stick on this stage, or would you move away? Uh, I would try to... S I, I mean, honestly, both characters have the same kind of advantages in this stage of interactables. Um, Superman just has more mobility, and that's never going to change no matter what stage you use. Wow. Here you go. Let's see if he's going to get any sort of sick cross-up setups. Yeah, remember the situation last time? Okay. Oh, goes for it, but meter burned through. Oh, in the... Wow. That is unfortunate. He started moving. A little bit too early. And here you go. Let's see if uh, DJT can start something right now. He goes for... Oh, he doesn't actually attack this time. Oh, I love that idea. It, after that 4 3 trait, it, the mix-ups are becoming really interesting for KDZ. Wow. Went for a side switch. Nice punish as he fell. And right back into the corner. There's Good that blocking from KDZ. Yeah, he knows it. Trait. Oh, heat vision. This is going to be tough right now for DJT. He has to just deal with this zoning. KDZ is just going all out with lasers right yeah, now. That, that was a free meaty laser right there. And the crowd doesn't like it. KDZ, like we said, is from New Jersey. DJT is from Vegas. You can see him with the UNLV shirt on there. University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And it's two out of three. So that's KDZ's. He moves on to grand finals. So DJT moves on to Losers Finals. Not sure who he's going to play against yet. We've got to find that out first. It's going to be, yep, there's the bracket. It's either Chris G or Slayer. Now, Chris G, I'm really curious on what character he's going to use. I, I, want to, I want to know if he's going to opt to use Black Adam at any point in this top eight. He's been sticking a green arrow. It's been working. Uh, he ended up getting put into Losers, though. So, I mean, tournament life is potentially on the line. Does he want that huge damage potential from Black Adam, or does he want those endless mix-ups from Green Arrow? It looks like he's wanted Arrow so far. And it's really been working for him, like you said. He's had great placements, great timings, even making the zoning work out for him sometimes. Yeah, MF Slayer, he uses uh, Superman, so this, is, this could potentially be really, really tough for Green Arrow. Let's see who he ends up using. It looks like he's going to probably go Green Arrow. He's already on probably, top of Green Arrow. Yeah, it's probably a button check still. Yeah, I would think so. I guess, well, there's the Black Adam that you were talking about. Chris G on the two-player side. Yeah, if I were Chris G, I would probably use Black Adam in this matchup. I think Black Adam can just handle Superman's mobility and strings a lot better. Okay. Um... I'd say that Green Arrow, he just he has to open him up so much, and that's so risky to do against Superman. Superman can just kind of blow you up in two mix-ups, and that's it. So with Black Adam, at least he has that major damage potential that he can potentially end up winning the game with. We'll see if this is real. Yeah, it looks like, looks like it is. Okay. So Trey up then just down one. And Chris G just blocking. Looks like he wasn't too disturbed about that situation. Now in the corner, though. Oh, he drops oh, the combo. It. Yeah. Oh, combo the trade. Not quite there. He had a couple, but not the whole thing. 
And Black Adam still caught in the corner. Love the down two to keep him in there. Black Adam with one of the best dashes in this game, easily. Might be one of the reasons why Chris G opted to actually use him. Oh, that was so smart. He knocked him down. Oh, in the second one, too. That was so smart from MS Slayer, knocking Chris G down so he couldn't do a tech row and just threw an uh, interactable at him. Got that round. Pretty free so far. Almost a, a flawless. Oh, the low. Big risk to take on that, but it pays off. And now Chris G has a chance to take off a chunk of life of his own. What's the setup after? Just waits. Playing patiently. Slayer's really been trying to interrupt the jump, too into the string with down one. It's worked a couple of times. You know he has that Black Adam experience considering Godspeed from SoCal as well. Oh, he doesn't Missed follow it. up. That is not Hello good for again. Chris G. Scoop. He's going to have to break. Has it. Yeah. Plenty of meter. He can get back as much life as he wants. Chris G will probably end up using three bars, saving one bar. Oh, oh he the uses all four. I'm not that, sure why. That extra three percent. I don't know Not if that that's much worth there. it. I, I don't think so, especially against somebody like Superman who can take off so much more than that at, at anything. Oh, oh, the reset! Full screen, but right back in. 4 2 3. It's not looking good for Chris right now. He takes the round. He uses his trade, goes all in, tries to get as much damage as possible. Ends up working out for Chris G. Oh, oh he misses the cross. Can he get the whiff line? He's going to get it this time, yes. Still has the corner. He's got to make something happen. Oh, I love that dash towards Superman punch right underneath. That's so he smart. He expected that interactable to come, and it did. And he knew he could get underneath it in time. Yeah, that's definitely one of the things that we've been seeing this game, how it's been evolving with the players. They have not only stage, you know, they know their characters, they know their punishes, but they're also aware of the interactables. We also saw how aware people are with transitions as well. Mm -hmm. So let's see if Chris G can make this adaptation. We saw Chris G, he's really good at punishing interactables as well, so he might actually do it right now. Let's see what he does. Well, he's betting his tournament on Black Adam here. Two out of three. Oh, he tried oh, to go for it. a wish pun oh, whiff punish, but didn't quite work out. Oh, trying for the overhead. There's a the whiff punish from Chris. He's got to make this one count. This is big damage right now. Let's yeah, see what Chris does. G can do. Oh, jump two out of the air, but then this is a juggle. And now Chris looks like he might try to zone. Nope. Just playing patiently. He knows he has a big life lead. Nice air to air right there. Yeah, I love jump two. So strong. Oh, oh, we hit him behind it? <laughs> it's Black Adam. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that hit. Oh, okay. oh so smart. He had so been going, smart. He had been going for the overhead. Oh, wow. Just does heat vision right there. I wonder if that was supposed to be 4 3 instead. And just chips him out with the laser beam. He uses a bar meter. Both players just kind of feeling each other out right now. Gets hit by the dive kick. He had to break there. That would have been big damage. Yes, indeed. Two bars to spend for Slayer. Is that what he does? Yeah, both of them. 25% damage uh, or health back. And now he has the corner. Chris gets out. Oh, that could have been a big punish. But Chris G does not capitalize. Lots of damage on this, though. Here you go. All we Let's see if... Oh, Chris G opts to just move away. Just chip away. And so you can see Slayer trying to jump over, does not want to get lightning. Smart from Chris G. He just uses his train, and he's just threatening him by just moving forward. There it is. He catches uh, Slayer moving with the, the, the lowly uh, lightning. Wow, very fast. Back to character select. He's thinking about Wonder Woman, maybe? No. Uh, no, I think he's going to uh, change the stages. Mm -hmm, yeah. So here we go. Okay, We're going yeah. to the mascara. Uh, I'm not really sure how different this stage actually is because the interactable use is kind of similar. They bo there's two giant masks that they can both use, which is similar to the two TVs. Right. So I don't really know how much this changes the matchup at all. There it is. Oh, Dash Thunder. Got the whiff punish. And then try to put just the wrong angle. Superman with some bad aiming there. Yeah. <laughs> Follow him up, jump two out of the air, but no whiff punish or no, no juggle again. Oh, this nice air-to-air air right there. Yeah, there it is. This is what he needs. Trying with some cross-up shenanigans. Love the spacing on that back dash. Turned it into big damage and a corner situation for himself. Now, Chris G can use this anorectable and meter burn it. 
Oh, he offs them. He's just going to keep moving forward. Right. Oh, he was blocking low. And that is a risky proposition against Black Adam. Chris G really respecting MS Slayer on wake up. Oh, oh. gets with the dive kick. Cross up. Again, just land. As you land, you have pretty significant recovery frames. And that's exactly what Chris got right there. Busted right through him. Now, MS Slayer is getting really close to super right now. Chris G has no meter. Gets oh, hit. got him. Can't believe he got hit with that laser beam. It didn't look like it was going to hit him, but I guess he meter burned it just in time. So no super at this point. Oh, jump two. Preemptive. He expected Black Adam to be up there. He was right. Oh, I think he tried to get away from that dive kick, just not in time. That's what it looked like. Now Chris gets oh, back. Chris oh, Chris G. He was waiting for that wake up. He didn't get a punish. Oh, oh no. It's going to be big. And he likes to reset himself, but Black Adam was too close. Really smart thinking from MS Slayer, though, trying to get that guaranteed damage so Chris G couldn't break. I like it, yeah. Okay, MS Slayer has one bar meter advantage here. He's probably going to end up using it. I think he might be right. But, yep, 25% life back. Oh, Chris G actually didn't use any meter at all. Okay, yeah. so that was smart from MS Slayer. Ooh. Christy getting good damage on this. And then backs off. Oh, the oh. EX. The oh, jump, and then he drops the combo. It. Oh, no. That is a big drop that, for Chris it. G. And then another big uh, drop for Chris. He actually might go down on this. No, has to wager. Chris, Chris G is at the meter disadvantage yeah, right now. This is going to be a bad situation afterward. Watch for laser. Oh, there he, he got into the air. air kick. He got into the air. Oh. He was looking for laser, too. He jumped up. He got a dive kick. And that is it. So good from Chris G. So close. That could have gone either way in that situation. Chris G made a really smart read there. Got him with the dive kick. So good. Wow. Chris G ends up eliminating him from the tournament. So Chris G makes it into losers finals on the strength of that. I mean, if that had been a heat vision rather than laser, might have knocked him out of the air, but it's just a... Just a guess on both parties' side. Yeah, that was absolutely intense. Good stuff from Chris G. Yeah. Really good play from MF Slayer, too. Incredible and just mind games with the interactables, with the wake-up game, with all those cross-up potentials. It's so, so good. Yeah, I like a lot of what he did. He went for reset sometimes. Yeah, he, he was so he went, smart with that reset. Tra trade activation into, you know, low or into overhead or into grab sometimes. He had all sorts of mix-ups, but Chris G just managed to take it. Yeah. Great, great spacing, great reactions from Chris. He made most of his combos count until that last round when it was really pretty nuts. Yeah, you saw how much the pressure was on in that situation. Yeah. Chris G was just dropping his combos in the end. Ultimately ends up taking it, though. So close. So DJT was sent here to Losers Finals by KDZ. KDZ just waiting to see who he plays against in the Grand Finals. So this is going to be Chris G versus DJT. I don't know if we're going to see Black Adam versus uh, Green, Green Lantern. Lantern yeah, I, I, yeah, I think we might see that, mostly because Green Lantern kind of has trouble with Black Adam's mobility. That makes sense, yeah. The extra mobility, he can move around, he can react to things with dive kick. And he can zone from far away, too. Yep. In a way that can be frustrating for Green Lantern. So checking buttons, you can see Chris having a little conversation with people. Chris G could potentially, this could be his uh, his third tournament in a row for Injustice. He already won UFGT, he won CEO. Can he win the biggest tournament of them all? Yeah, I'm really happy at the top three that we have. I, like I said, I think KDZ has been playing really well. He got top three at CEO and has been... Just one of the most successful Supermans in the country. K uh, uh, Chris G, as you said, he has won two majors already. DJT won MK9 on Friday. Three very successful players in the top three of Injustice, Evil 2013. So it's like we're still uh, just doing a... Uh, is he thinking well, about the character to use? Yeah, he, I think he yeah. is, because he was hanging out on Black Adam right there. You can see on the bottom right. And now he's hanging on top of Green Arrow... Looks like some indecision on Chris's part. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really tough. And he opts to go with Green Arrow. Okay. I know there are some players in New York who play against or who play with Green Lantern, so 
probably has experience, but you know, we'll see. I'm sure he knows what to look for. Now, this is going to be really tough, considering how good DJT is at blocking. I don't know if that mix-up game from Chris G is actually going to work in his favor here, but let's see. Yeah, when they when they played earlier, you know, DJT ended up winning it at the start of winter semis. All right, Chris G opts to start just chipping him out with the fire. Yeah, but he's going for the zoning option here, rather than for ice arrow. Oh, punish! Oh, that was really smart from DJT. Instead of instead of using that overhead uh, missile, he opts to use the machine gun instead. Ooh, got him. It's a risky lanterns might to take there, but it pays off. And it goes right into the tran stage transition. Going to be decent damage on this, and he'll end up in mid-screen again. Now, Chris G might have to worry about this interactable that's right there. It's not going to quite reach. And DJT just backs off. Ice arrow now from Chris. Looking for the freeze, looking for some trade. It's worked out before, oh, almost there. It's tough for DJT to throw out projectiles preemptively, as you can see. Just takes a risk each time that he will get frozen. Like that! And there you go, this is not a good trade in... Oh, okay, he just ends up getting a throw. He, didn't, he probably didn't have enough time to actually get a full combo there. Chris stays on top of that interactable. And very patient play on both players' part. Oh, that was close. I'm guessing Chris G was caught pushing a button right there. It's a very, very patient zoning game right now. I look how DJT is just waiting for it to come. Great angle on that, but Chris knew that he was on top of it. And again, throwing projectiles preemptively as Green Lantern in this matchup just seems so risky against Chris. Chris G trying to build a little bit of meter right there really quick. Oh, gets him with the jump three. Doesn't get a combo, though. And now no ice arrow. And he, wow, he does actually have time to charge it back up. Down one, down one again, going for low a couple times. I think he caught Chris G pushing a button right there. I think I think you're right. I think that's why that worked out right there. Chris G was trying to get in front of the rocket this time. Didn't work out. Oh, look at look how much patience GJT has right now. He has the life lead. He just Ooh. needs to play it cool. He was just waiting for Chris to, to, to jump. And it came. Chris not clashing. He... Again, wants to make use of that super. There's the clash. That was time. a good punish from the dash right there. Chris G likes to use Green Arrow's dash a lot. A lot of people don't capitalize on it, but DJT, his reactions are absolutely on point. Out of there with jump three. Chris G now with corner opportunity. Oh, he drops the combo. Oh, down one pressure. That's the round, at least for Chris. There's only 11 seconds left. Is, is Chris G going to use a flame arrow? Yeah, he, he does. Yeah, he gets that extra chip. This is a really dangerous situation. Oh, no. He gets the... Oh, jump three, beat Lanterns Mike this time. Lanterns Mike comes in. This I think it's going to be it. Yeah, no wager from Chris. He's already used it. And back three, just to try to waste some seconds off the clock with the meter burn on that. That was absolutely intense. I could have gone either way in any situation, but DJT barely manages to get that one advantage that he needed and got the time out there. I love his use of meter burn right there. Oh, just yeah. Just to try to suck off another second on the clock. He knows he's up against the character in Green Arrow. Not very damaging in any case, but... Yeah, so I'm uh, curious... With, without resetting, <laughs> that is. But yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point. Does Chris G want to go to Black Adam now? Yeah. Well, he was thinking about it before. You know, he's played Green Arrow against DJT so far, and it hasn't worked out. Not in winter semis, not so far in grand finals. It looks like he opts to stick with Green Arrow. All and right, here we go. Final, sorry. That's not a bad trade for Chris G right there. He ends up getting that full screen zoning game again. Oh, that was really good. Anticipating that jump, getting with the anti air arrow. Got on top of it, yep. Wow, uh, max range on the might. And we're going to the other side of the stage here. We talked about that interactable four last time. It didn't come into play. A little bit behind where they're going to start out. Oh, no, it comes in with back one. But I guess didn't see that it was hitting. He went for the, the block version with missile. Oh, he tries to go for an overhead. Chris G really blocking well right now. There's the overhead. And another chance, this time to grab Chris G reacts in time. 
Nice blocking there from DJT. He knows that, that one magic string from Green wow. Arrow way too well. So many overheads right there. Chris blocked them all. Finally, there was a back one, but Green Arrow didn't quite take the round on it. Our Green Green Lantern. Punishes the jump attack with a down one. Ends that round pretty decisively right now. Christian needs to make something happen. His tournament life is potentially on the line right now. So much respect there from the arrow. Ooh, he was just outside of the mic. Did you see that? Nice punish by Chris. Oh, he's just going in with jump threes right now. Great block on the chain. DJT blocking so well. And hanging out just underneath. Okay, he moves backward. He likes the angle on that interactable. Just playing patiently. Because she gets underneath it. Oh, tried to take up space in the mid-range, but not punish. Meter burns for safety. And Chris G gets out of the corner. 30 seconds Good block from Chris G. Play. Oh, comes in with the grab now. Got to nice. punish. He, yes. he's, he knew the wake-up was going to come, and he ended up just blocking him and punishing him for that round. Really good stuff from Chris G. Again, Chris is just not taking care of that. There you well, go. This time he does. Just, that's exactly what he needs to do. Maybe he heard somebody in the crowd just say, dash forward, I'm not sure. But he finally figured out what to do. Slight life lead right now for DJT. Oh, goes in for the grab. Oh. Maybe a chance for Chris. Didn't take it. Again, meter burn. Going for Chip. Chip is a major issue right this now. This is going to be a big punish. punish. And goes for I love this option right here. There's only 11 seconds on the clock left. He goes for the super for the guaranteed damage. He's going to get a free back three right here. Another back three, or forward three. Forward three. 36% damage, only seven seconds left. Gotta make it happen. Is Chip gonna be enough? Goes for overhead. Good block. Nice blocking by Chris. Blocking again. Why is he, Chris G can he, not? Oh no, he's gonna do oh. it the whole way. But his own wager. That is not gonna be good. DJT has a meter advantage. Can he get the, enough life back? He did! He got 25% life back. One second left. That's oh. it. Chris G has been eliminated. That was so, so close. Chris was just in a terrible situation before that wager. He might have died in that combo, but he wagered to make sure he wouldn't. But by wagering, he gave DJT the chance to get all that life back. And it was the life back and the timeout that sent him out of this tournament. So Chris G loses in winner's side and then in loser's side to DJT. So Chris G gets third place mm -hmm. at Evolution 2013. Skullgirls coming out, uh, breaking out as they say. August 22nd, you can pre-order it August 1st on Steam. Check them out at skullgirls.com. Awesome fighting game there. I love the animation that this game has. The soundtrack is incredible. I was watching uh, the top eight for Skullgirls. Uh, I think it was last night. It was on last and, night. And uh, Duck Eater ended up winning. Not surprising to many people. He's pretty dominant in that game. Skullgirls, awesome game to watch. Yeah. Just looks absolutely amazing. Some cool character designs. You can check it out at Skullgirls.com. Oh, and Salty Bet. See what's going on on this thing. SaltyBet.com is a place where you can place your bets. Follow them at SaltyBet. JTGS up 45,000. Wow, that's actually pretty close. That. Right there at the, the top three. <laughs> PS3 lag. <laughs> it's like definitely a risk showing all the names up here of the top five gainers. <laughs> all right, so Grand Finals coming up next for Injustice. Grand Finals. Evo 2013. It's going to be EMP KDZ versus Crazy DJT88. Can DJT do it? He has to reset the bracket. This is going to be really, really a grind for him. He's going to have to fight Superman with his Green Lantern. Can he do it, though, and actually get two championships at this evolution? He's got a chance, but he's got to make it happen from the loser's bracket. Yeah, this is going to be really tough for him. Superman with crazy damage potential, so many different mix-ups, such good mobility. It's going to be really tough for Green Lantern to open him up. KDZ so far has looked really good. He has not lost a game in top eight yet. 2-0 over Slayer, 2-0 over D DJT. Oh, nice. He ends up punishing that jump back two there from Green, uh, Green Lantern. Puts his opponent into the corner, then goes for the cross-up. The nice block. Here's the blocking you've been talking about. And DJT has been displaying all day. DJ 
JT just playing it very patient right now. Catches uh, KDZ backdashing. Getting some good far range damage with the laser. Look how much meter he's building. Yeah, that's the thing. Even when las lasers whiff, they still build meter. Already up. Almost a twofer there. He burns one to get the interactable. Gotta make it safe against Superman. Trade goes to the grab, but that hasn't really been working today. Yeah, KDZ has been, at, or uh, DJT's been absolutely on point with his tech throws. And here you go. This is his big chance right now. Let's see what he does after this. Goes for a mix up. Tries to get the overhead. It doesn't quite work. Yeah, he goes for the same setup he's been using a lot. Oh, nice. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but that ends up working in his favor. Superman punch on wake up ends up putting him all the way on the, in the, into the corner. Oh, just outside of Lantern's might range right there. DJT just gets a little bit wrong. DJT, he knows how to deal with zoning. And MK9, he was dealing with Cabal. Oh, he expected the dash to come in, back one, turns it into the round. Really? And it's it's taken him a while, but he's, he's there. Yeah, DJT, all he has to do is just keep playing patient. Mm -hmm. Oh, this oh, is his chance. Punished. This is a huge opportunity for him here. Are we going to see an interactable? No. Oh, oh whip punish, got to have it happen here. I think he was expecting a wake up attack. Oh, the low! So tricky. I have not seen KDZ use that setup yet. I, yeah, I don't think I have either. The grab this time, it works out. No tech here. Oh, nice. Gets him with the interactable. Here we go. DJT, just like that. He's trying to even it up with unbreakable damage. And he's just trying to chip from far away right now. Superman has a super. Oh, he didn't punish that Lantern's might. Oh. This is a chance. But watch out for interactable. I'm sorry, for, for a wager. Yeah, I like just ending it. Oh, oh. I believe not quite. He, he, he needs to make something happen right now. It's so close. Only five seconds left right now. I think he has life advantage. Not anymore. Can he get in? Oh. oh, punish on the whiff. That was so close. KDZ game one in a three out of five set. The crowd, <laughs> the crowd booing KDZ right now. I do not think they want to see Superman win. Well, he's been on a roll. Again, he has not lost a game yet in top eight. Good blocks there from DJT, but he ends up getting punished for using the Green Lantern's might. Yeah, that's a big risk to take against a character like Superman. You know you're going to end up in the corner with a lot of life lost. Oh, what a smart meter burn. Going to be so much damage here. Oh, he could have ended the round. All of that damage, 55% right there. He just didn't have enough life to absorb that. KDZ taking this first round pretty free right now. He almost has a flawless. Oh, nice punish there from KDZ. DJT is kind of falling apart right now. He's not playing as patiently. There you go. Okay. He's probably going to throw an interactable. Oh, no, no he opts he not to. That's not a good trade in DJT's favor right there. Ends up taking that unbreakable damage. Oh, I love the movement right now from KDZ. He's playing this. Oh, so smart again. He's that made that work two times. Yeah, the movement from KDZ, he's really uh, understanding when to go away, when to come in. DJ Tay really smart there right there, taking that damage, going for a reset right now. He could take this first round, getting guaranteed damage from that transition. I don't think this is going to be enough. Yeah, I don't think so. Going to be close, though. He might he oh. might have to use the interactable. Is he going to go for it? No, he doesn't. Try to jump one. Oh, but again, the tech, and that's it. There we go. He got one more game. Can DJT do this? This is going to be really tough. He needs to win two in a row right now. And just to be just to be even with him, this is going to be tough. It's 2-0 right now. Such a dominant performance by KDZ. DJT kind of looking back right now. Beat Slayer 2-0. Beat DJT 2-0 in winners finals, and here he's already up two games to zero against DJT in grand finals. Doomsday. He, he opts to use Doomsday. Okay, classic rivalry right here. Superman versus Doomsday. Why do you think he would go to Doomsday? Here? I am not sure. Maybe I. I, I honestly, that doesn't seem like that great a matchup. Yeah, I am not sure. I mean, once Doomsday activates his armor, Superman can actually nullify that armor by just activating traits. Exactly. So that's not going to be the reason why he opts to use them. So I don't really know. I mean, he has good mobility. Oh, the wake up setting a tone early. 
so far just caught. Oh, he, oh. oh, he was going to get an anti-air there. Nice. Maybe he just wants that mobility from Doomsday to just rush right in. As you saw right there, he didn't have to deal with that zoning. He was able to just dash right through it. Oh, Maybe that's, that's exactly what he needed. Oh, nice block there. Nope. DJT, nice. With it's the anti-air. Look at this. Doomsday versus Superman. DJT up around. Oh, the goes to the cross and then just sweep afterward. 3-3. Three, three. He uses push, push block. Yeah. You wow. don't want to deal with Doomsday's advantage there. And just like that. Wow, he took off so much like 40%, 47%. Just like that. And the corner situation too for KDZ, who's on tournament point right now. Oh, with oh, punish on the tier one. Punish. This is going to hurt. All right, he opts to break. He has three bars of meter, so this is good for DJT. But he can't really take too much after this. 25% life back. Very even. Oh, there's the trait that we were talking about. He's just going to nullify. Oh, he moves forward. And there you over. go. And there goes Doomsday's armor, just like that. Gets right. him with the cross up. KDZ is on the verge of taking this thing. Can he finish it here? And here he there goes. He is. KDZ wins EVO 2013 in Injustice. He was undefeated in the top eight, did not lose a game. Absolutely dominant performance there from KDZ. We saw a great adaptation, great use of so many different mix-ups. He was so smart with his play. He used, he delayed his uh, his his ice breath. He would go for the overhead. He would go for low mix-ups. He would go for new mix-ups that he just revealed in one of his matches. That's right. So good. He and Superman happy to see his character winning. And lots of guys from the New York, New Jersey, New Jersey scene going over to talk with KDZ, give him some congratulations. He had a complete Superman. You know, he had the tricks like you were saying. He had the awesome uh, mid-range game with 4-2-3 with punishing, taking up space and, and footsies there. And even from far away, he was willing to play the slow, patient zoning game too with Superman. He really made that character shine. Yeah, absolutely dominant performance from KDZ, not losing a single, a single match. That is absolutely amazing. He goes 3-0 and in Grand Finals over DJT, which is no easy feat right no. there. DJT getting second place, which is still major props to DJT for placing that well in Injustice. He ended up taking Mortal Kombat first place on Friday, gets second place in Injustice. Major, major props to DJT. Yeah, definitely not a bad weekend for him. Did great in two games. KDZ ends up taking it. Chris G in third place. Great job to him, too. That green arrow, Black Adam. And then we have MF Slayer is mm -hmm. fourth place. That's right. With really, really smart play uh, with Superman. Uh, he opted to use Wonder Woman in one match. It didn't quite work in his favor, but his Wonder Woman looked pretty okay. I want to see Wonder Woman uh, in, uh, in next tournaments. Yeah. Tied for fifth were Theo and Godspeed. And tied for seventh, PR Rog and Rio. I know the MK community is a little bit disappointed in Rio's performance. I know they were really hoping for him to, to win it all. Yeah. But, I mean, he still played extremely strong. Gets seventh place at Evolution 2013 with Batman. Batman, obviously a really good character. Rio, obviously a really good player as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think, it, I think this is a great top eight for, for the MK scene. Uh, for the, the other players in Injustice who are, who are coming into it from other games. And, and regionally speaking, too. The West Coast was represented, both SoCal and NorCal. We had a Vegas local. We had New York, New Jersey represented, too. All over the country here. Yeah, unfortunately, the we Midwest Rio did not that's, that's get the to, to make it. Yeah. I, I think that's a little surprising. A lot of heavy hitters coming out of the Midwest. If I were to pick one major surprising thing about the results here, I think that might be it. Also yeah. tying for seventh, P.R. Rock. E.G.'s P.R. Rock. So what a great story this year at EVO, for the first time evo uh, at Evolution in Justice. Fifth, we have Emperor Theo. And taking fourth, we have MF Slayer 909. And coming in at third, you know him, you love him, AGZ, AGEs, Chris G.
and taking second, almost, but not quite, crazy, DJT. And taking that title, the Superman with the plan, KDZ. Clap it up for that man, clap it up for that man. You didn't beat him, let's go. KDZ, your Evolution 2013 champion for Injustice. Such a good story this year. We had M Clay players in the, in the top eight. We had Street Fighter Marvel players in the top eight. Such a, uh, a, diversity, a diversity in the roster as well. We saw Superman. We saw Batman. We saw Green Arrow, Black Adam. We saw uh, Killer Frost. Such good diversity. Uh, hopefully, let's see what happens in the next tournaments. We saw certain players playing so well with those interactables. They knew exactly what to do. We saw Chris G punishing people for using interactables. We saw Rio punishing people for using interactables and, and stage transitions as well. Such an interesting level of play. I want to see how it evolves. Yeah, like you said, it's a pretty young game. It's going to be interesting to, to watch this game evolve as it moves forward. Uh, again, awesome top eight. I, I, I love the fact that there was the, as much diversity as there was in, in scene, in, in location, in characters. I uh, hope you guys had a blast watching uh, Injustice at EVO uh, Top 8. Uh, we're going to throw it back. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, everybody. What's up, guys? This is Spooky. Once again, thanks for tuning in to EVO 2013. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Coming up, we have a special presentation for Killer Instinct. Stick around. It'll be in just a minute. Thanks for watching, everyone.
everybody, before the next event, which I know you're waiting for, we got a special announcement, special presentation. I want you to give a warm round of applause to Mad Cat's Markman and his good buddy from Double Helix. It's Filthy Rich! What's up, everybody? It's good to see you guys. Mad Cats is happy to support Evo for the fourth straight year in a row. And again, we love the fighting game community, so thank you for everything that you guys do. I'm here with my brother, Mr. Filthy Rich. What's up, Rich? What's going on, man? We're chilling. We're getting everything hype. I know everybody's getting ready for Marvel, but, you know, we came from Doe Helix, and we brought Killer Instinct for everybody over here at Evo. Everybody got a chance to play it. And, uh, you know, we, we got some really hype stuff to talk about, man. And again, Killer Instinct coming out later this year, exclusively for the Xbox One. We have a great partnership with Microsoft and with Double. Yo, yo, yo! All right, and one of the things that we wanted to announce that we're making a special Killer Instinct version of the stick, and we're working with the guys over at Double Helix and Microsoft, so I want to give lots of love to these guys. We're bringing it out for the community. This game has been gone for 17 years, and it's back thanks to the guys that are putting in their hard work. They got the community behind them, a lot of people within the community, and they're going to be doing a great thing. You guys are going to see the game real soon. Yeah, just continuing on that. Ever since E3, we've been listening to everything that everybody's been saying, everything from top players to 